And next for your enjoyment, we have choline. Now choline's just a straight chain. There's an amine on it. That means it's got a nitrogen. Whenever you hear amide, amine, imid, nitrogen. Again, methyls. So look at this here. You got a nitrogen that's got four bonds. Usually it'll hold three strong like the ammonia and maybe a proton could come along on that lone pair of electrons. So here it's actually bound. So you've got three methyl groups on this nitrogen bound to another carbon. So I have two H's on it. So the nitrogen gets a plus overall charge. So to keep the molecule kind of neutral, what do you get down here? OH, you think that proton's gonna stay there? Probably not. So down here you would have a minus side, which it looks like it's gonna hold a ligand here because choline is used in many things as acetylcholine is the main neurotransmitter. So alcohol, methyls. See how there's one side that's going to be hydrophilic, which is water-loving, hydrophobic, which will be this side. I don't like water. These are all fat lovers. So choline was discovered in 1864, synthesized two years later, and was classified as an essential nutrient not until 19... 98. They just doubled the daily recommended allowance for vitamin D. They're still learning. And believe me, by the time they tell us, vitamin D, if we could go into more depth, you'll see it. You need the sun to convert it to an activated form. So just drinking milk ain't going to do it. Choline. Now, biotin. This was also found to be semi-essential because what will happen is sometimes you got the bacteria in your intestines that will break down molecules. Uh, folate I think is the one for this. Is my memory working here? But look at this molecule. Isn't this cool? You got a ring with two ends in it. Double bonded oxygen off the end. So there's a ketone. This is looking like our DNA. The DNA bases with the five penta here you got a penta-5 ring, penta with a sulfur on it. Then you've got the side chain hanging off here. Remember the fives? How many carbons do you think there are coming off this side chain here? The isoprenes, remember the five carbons? Here it is. One, two, three, four, five with a carboxylate. So this is going to ionize out there. So this is where you're going to see the B3 fish. The OH minuses... These are going to be in the water, doubly negative. They're sharing the electric charge back here, negative. So the technical names on these things, valeric acid, isoprene. See, I even wrote it there. Five carbons, valeric acid, because it's got the carboxylate acid, and isoprene. Prene is actually if it had a double bond in there, but it's close enough for what it's originated from five carbons. Let's see there's some of the artistic ways that we drew this. I think this looks pretty neat. Just shapes. So if you're into the structure of the molecule, you don't have to get bogged down by the names of the nitrogen or the oxygen, sulfur. You look, and this is what my color coding is so neat about. Oxygen is always green. Green, negative, electrons, green, with the two lone pairs on oxygen when it's bound, negative. Nitrogen is still pronounced the way I believe azure, A-Z-U-R-E in France. That means blue. So if nitrogen means blue in France, French, let's color the code blue for nitrogen, it's also neutral in our proton neutron talk. Sulfur is yellow, and yellow isn't used that much in the molecule scheme, so let's yellow for sulfur, blue for nitrogen, green for oxygen because it's electronegative. Carbon, I guess we got to stick with black because carbon, soot, coal, think of it, oil, black, so carbon's black. 
This is the great color scheme. I've seen other ways where the carbon's green, which is cool because photosynthesis and all that. Doesn't work though. Green for oxygen. Again, when you see this out here, we got lone pairs on the nitrogen, electrons up here. We got a real negative side to this here. We got a fat loving tail, but we've got a negative carboxylic acid out there. So biotin, this is now considered an essential element, essential nutrient. Biotin is a cofactor in the metabolism of fatty acids and leucine and gluconeogenesis. Now me, with all my schooling, if you remember, I have a research degree in chemistry with minors in physics and biology, lots of math and music. Only took me three terms to get my diploma. Reagan, Bush, and Clinton. So with all my learned science here, biotin is the cofactor. Gluconeogenesis. Neo means new. Gluco is glucose. Genesis means makes. So, storing sugar, I would imagine, is what they're talking about when you're making glycogen. Is that where the glucose goes into the muscle and you need to store it? So, biotin is going to be used in the storing of your glucose. Gluconeogenesis, so making new glucose. Maybe it's, we don't do photosynthesis in the human body, so that's kind of what the name is implying there but I'll take it to mean that we're storing it. The metabolism, breakdown of fatty acids, and leucine. That's one of our essential amino acids. And next for your enjoyment, we got vitamin B6. Now this has some other names like pyridoxine, but what makes it unique now is we can give it a shape that we can remember. So as we look at this, we've got an oxygen in a six-membered ring. We had an oxygen in a five-membered ring before. So oxygen in a six-membered ring with all these on the outside kind of looks like it could be close to a vitamin C. But with that extra carbon in the ring, eh, it's not that close. But think of it as kind of vitamin C's big brother, maybe. Although it doesn't have as long a side chain. But we've got one, two, three, four oxygens. We had six in the vitamin C. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So it's six and six, even. But vitamin B6, this is a popular vitamin nowadays. Let's read a little bit and see what they use it for. Here's some different representations of the molecule here. We take our benzene ring, see we've got a methyl hanging off the top there so we can draw it in and kind of give them a head if we wanted. You guys can draw this yourself. Take any carbon atom, if you want to make it a circle, if you want to make it an angle, if you want to make it a C, you can do whatever you want with it. You can draw the methyls in, CH3. You'll see later you could just draw ME. We could just leave it blank. We could just have the stick going up. We have one of those in there, no. The green, we don't even need to write oxygen in there. We can just leave a little circle. We can draw the circle inside here. We could make it a rainbow. We could make it the star like we did before. So it's an aromatic ring with an oxygen in it, six carbons, so now we see it's a lot different from vitamin C. Let's see what else it said vitamin B6 is used for. We've got three methanols on that thing. It's a trialcoholic. Let's see what they're saying here. It says that vitamin B6 is a water-soluble vitamin, part of the B complex. Paradoxal phosphate is the active form and is a cofactor. I'll scroll back for this to read it. 